Jen Holland joins me right now. Jen, I am so excited to talk about this show. It is so freaking fantastic. I cannot wait for fans to see it. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling excited. I'm excited to release it to the world and see what everyone thinks. Yeah, we have to start, I think, with the opening credits. They are so fun. Uh, Do You Want to Taste It has been stuck in my head ever since I watched it. I don't know if you're in the same boat. (laughs) but Uh, It's been stuck in my head since sometime early 2020. I bet. How did you, how was the uh, choreography for you? Because that was just so fun to watch. It was awesome. I loved working on it. We uh, James brought on Carissa Barton, who was the choreographer, who you know created the whole thing, and uh, and she sort of took James's vision, which was sort of very similar to what it ended up being, and she just kind of expanded on that and created this really amazing thing. I think originally it was supposed to be take place on one of our sets. Uh, maybe the HQ set or something like that. Um, But James had specific ideas of how he wanted to shoot it and the types of camera, the shots that he wanted to get. And so they ended up with this stage situation and it's, it's like kind of a fever dream. It's amazing. <laughs> it's de- yeah, definitely. <laughs> Unskippable credits too. So we meet Harcourt in The Suicide Squad, but we learn a lot more about her in Peacemaker. What was it like for you to just dig deeper into this character? It was a lot of fun. I mean, just to work on the show in any capacity, I think I would have just been ecstatic when I first heard that Harcourt was going to be in the series. I had absolutely no idea what that meant or in what capacity. And when I found out the depth of her character and just how well written she is in my humble opinion and how um, nuanced of a character she was, I was just, I was blown away. I just couldn't believe that I had been given this wonderful opportunity. And um, I just feel so grateful that I get to play her. And I hope that everyone feels like I do her justice. Oh, a hundred percent. And by the way, I would like your arms routine, whatever that is. I I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I worked out a lot for this role. I wanted to make sure that she both, you know, I didn't want her to look like someone who was just incredibly svelte, like someone who didn't eat food. Uh, I, I wanted her to look like someone who ate food and drank beer, but also was an expert at what she does. And um, and so I worked out really hard with a trainer. He actually, he's an actor and he's a good friend of mine. We were on this series, uh, Sun Records together. His name's Kevin Fontaine. He, um, you know, he's an actor and much like all actors, we go through periods of time when we're not working very much. And so uh, he also, he's very fitness, you know, oriented and he started doing some training on the side and he's incredible. I I worked with him on Zoom only um, and he, he just, he, he kicked my butt. (laughs) Did you do a lot of fight training for the show? I did. We, uh, anytime I wasn't on set, really, I was working with the, the stunts team and the fight team and, um, you know, the, the, the tactical guy on just training. And we did a ton of just general fight training. They taught me a lot of basics of certain things. And then we did a lot of uh, training for the specific fights that we have in the show. Uh, the, the stunts team um, led by Wayne was just incredible. I think they created some really amazing sequences in this show and I'm so grateful to be a part of them. It's been a dream of mine to be able to meld sort of the the physical part of myself, the athletic part of myself with acting. And I got to fully do that in this series. And my stunt double, Yulia, is incredible. She makes me look like way more of a badass than I am. Um, You know, she she taught me all of the, the fights we, worked tirelessly to make sure that I could do everything almost as well as she was doing it so that whenever they needed to shoot, they wanted certain shots, I was able to do it um, and sell it. And she just worked really, really hard with me to make sure I was able to do that. So I wouldn't have been able to do any of it without her. I owe owe so much of this character to her, definitely. 
I love you in this show, and I'm so glad because in the Suicide Squad, the tagline is don't get too attached, so you never know who's going to make it. Um, was there ever a version, or did you and James ever talk about a version where Harcourt, for whatever reason, did not make it past Suicide Squad? I don't think so because she was such an inconsequential character to some degree. I mean, she ended up becoming somewhat um, important throughout the different iterations of his script. And, you know, originally her, the character was called like comms tech two in, okay. in the original script. Uh, he just, you know, the, the, the character became more integral to certain parts of the story and then he thought, oh, maybe I, I'll give this character a name from the comic books so that when fans are watching the, the credits, they'll see that was Amelia Harcourt and they'll be like, oh, cool, what does that mean, you know? Um, but we didn't really, there were no plans for her beyond the Suicide Squad. Um, and, you know, thusly, I think she was never going to be important enough to, to perish in that film. <laughs> I see what you're saying, because but now I feel like, and this is maybe my own fanfic, but I feel like she could be like the interconnective tissue between if there were a bunch of shows, she's the one that like calls everyone up and is like, got an assignment for you, and she's like kind of bossing everybody around. That's what I want to see, at least. You know what? I want you in the creative rooms of these, uh, you know, of different various DC properties selling that because that would be the most amazing thing yeah let 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 them know um what other what other member of the suicide squad would you love to boss around next or at least explore harcourt's dynamic with you know the one that i always say is blood sport because it would be i think it would be fun if we ever got to have Bloodsport and Peacemaker together again. That would be a really fun thing to watch. But it would also probably be really interesting to see Ratcatcher 2 meet up with Peacemaker again and see how they're inter they interact with each other um, after what happened in, in the film. So I don't know. I think it would be fun to have any of them back into the mix. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, where does Harcourt rank in terms of characters you've played? Is she like your number one now? Yes. I, there's there's probably some part of me that feels that way while I'm, you know, in the midst of any certain character. If I've really fallen in love with them and, um, you know, usually I try to because it's the best way to give full life to someone is to, to love them for their faults and their strengths, I think. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the truth is not to in any way poo-poo any of the other writers I've ever worked with or any one else who's ever created anything that I've worked with. I just think I, I've never gotten to play such a fully fleshed out, real flawed individual as much as, as Harcourt is, if that makes any sense. She's just such a full person to me that uh, I just love her so much. I just think she's she's messed up and she's flawed and she's got all kinds of issues and um, and she's also strong and uh, you know there are reasons to look up to her and there's also a lot of things that she has to learn. So I, I just think she's a wonderful full character. That's good to hear because I interviewed James the other day and he said he wants to do 87 seasons of Peacemaker. So there's, <laughs> <laughs> you may be playing here for a while. Uh, what would it mean to, to get multiple seasons of the show and, and get back together with everyone for another season? Well, we'll have to see. We don't know who makes it out of this, this story alive. So you just never know until it's all out there. And then, and then we'll get to see what, what the possibilities are next, you know? That's true because nobody has seen the final episode yet. So nobody knows what happens. What episode or what episode are you most excited for people to see? My favorite episode is episode six. Um, the finale is a really in incredible episode. I love the finale, but episode six, there's so many important things that happen for so many of the, the character arcs. You know, everyone really gets a good character arc. There's one character arc that doesn't really come full circle until episode eight, but a lot of character arcs uh, sort of come to some 
crescendo to some degree or, you know, hit a climax at, at that episode. And it's just such a wonderfully nuanced episode. It was the last episode that we shot and James directed it. I think everyone was just in their element. Everyone had really gotten as comfortable as possible with the characters by that point. James had gotten as comfortable as possible with himself and knowing what he was doing with the show and everything just kind of flowed. And it is, I think, the most beautifully nuanced episode in the series my, my, myself.